hi everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all doing well this video has been a long time coming i actually got supplies to make candles a solid six months ago even eight months ago um and then i kind of chickened out i got nervous but just because of the health and safety implications of making candles um Firstly, this is one of the biggest questions I get asked. Can I use Jesmonite to make candles? And I often tell people exactly the same thing, which is what I've been told is that AC100 is not really suitable to make candles and AC730 is a lot more suitable. This is down to the fact that AC730 is non-combustible, AC100 is combustible. So I've often thought I should do it, I should have a go and do a test. So that is what we are doing in this video. We are doing start to finish from scratch, making candles from scratch. I bought all of the candle supplies bar a couple of little bits because I'm not going to start making candles and I didn't want to spend excess money. Um, but I just need to come on at the beginning to say a few things. Do not follow me, do not copy me. <laughs> Disclaimer, okay. Um, yeah do not take this as a gospel way to make candles this is just what i got from google and i cannot be held responsible for any house fires and if you go on to sell candles after watching my video i cannot be held liable for anything that may or may not happen um, in your future so that is what i needed to come on and say um but the end result of the video was really intriguing i definitely found some differences between the two um so this is not about how good I make candles or how badly I make candles. This is all about testing AC100 against AC730 to be used as candle vessels. That is all. Disclaimer has gone out there. That's it, I think. For legal purposes, this is an experiment that I am doing and I do not expect you to do the same. I'd love you to do your own research before making and selling candles. That is it. I'm going to stop talking. Let's go. So to prevent this video from being ridiculously long, I have pre-made my pots. This is the AC730 on the left and the AC100 on the right. Now, if you would like to know a lot more about these, then I've got so many videos on my channel and they will talk you through the differences between the two and what they can be used for. The AC730 is super textured, comes in loads of different finishes. The AC100 is the smoother of the two and you just add your pigment to your taste and whatever it is you're creating at the time so these are the two pots and they are ready all of the candle supplies I have in this video I purchased myself from supplies for candles this is not a sponsored video I did go for the paraffin container wax so huge shout out to Chris and Sarah who both helped me in my choices I really appreciated all their help they do make wax melts themselves and wax melt molds so I'm going for the paraffin because I am a beginner I also bought some wicks few too many I have I have to say I also bought the glue dots these are going to help me stick the wicks down into the pots and the other most important tool was the thermometer this is a wax thermometer this is going to help me know when to stop burning my wax etc the scents oh my gosh I bought these three scents they are absolutely stunning the one thing I didn't buy is the wick holders I just forgot all about it I made my own out of lollipop sticks and I drilled some holes before I actually melt the wax down and pour, I'm going to seal them both. The AC730 is getting the AC730 Flexi Guard and the AC100 is getting the acrylic sealer for that Jesmonite. I gave them both a really solid two coats of sealer and I left them overnight before we move on to stick the wicks in. So this is 24 hours later. They are fully dry, fully sealed and I am sticking the wicks down in a... I want to say centrally, but I think this one was a bit off. But I, you know, I eyeballed it and I wasn't very good at that. So here we are. Now, I did not invest in a huge candle making stove equipment set. I decided to use my jug and my pan that I already had. I poured all of my paraffin wax into the jug and then I poured the boiling water into the pan, making sure that no water got into the jug. This is my thermometer. It's got a nice green section that's going to let me know when I'm in the green, when I'm in the right temperature area. I do not want to melt my wax more and get it up into that red area. So these are all the things I found on Google. I have to melt my wax to 70 degrees. When it is 70 degrees, I turn off the heat and I add my fragrance to the mixture at 65 degrees. So I had to make sure 
that my wax had cooled down to 65 like you see here before I added my scent. You can add up to 10% fragrance oil to your candles at least that is what Google told me so again if you are a professional candle maker there may be steps in this video that I'm not doing right in your eyes but this was from a candle making website and there we are I did not make enough wax <laughs> standard for me I either make too much or too little so I had to go in clean my jug melt more wax add more fragrance 10% and then fill them up to around a centimeter from the top of the jars then I had to leave them 48 hours before burning again this was a google recommendation you might think otherwise for this paraffin wax it was 48 hours for soy wax it said a week oh my gosh I'm so glad I didn't use soy wax at this point so now we're starting the burn again this was 48 hours after pouring and I started to burn them I'm not noticing any differences between the two but the one thing I am noticing is that the wax never melted to the edge of the vessels now I've already done a video on how to melt candles how to burn candles the right way and they do recommend that you uh, burn them long enough to melt across the whole surface area of the candle this will avoid tunneling but I did notice that both of my candles started to tunnel straight away so the reason for this I'm guessing is that I do not have the right wick for the size of the vessel I could have put two in there but I was also worried about the heat getting too close to those edges and this is around about nine hours later now Google did say blow your candle out after four hours let it sit for a while before relighting but what I did was uh, I didn't I didn't do that um, for health and safety reasons do not follow me I babysat these I checked on them every 20 minutes throughout the day just to make sure that everything was okay and of course I'm in and out of the kitchen all the time anyway making tea but I did end up using some tin foil chimneys just to try and melt all the wax around the outer edge because I really didn't want that tunneling and yeah again because I'm not a professional candle maker I just bought the wrong wicks for the size of the vessel or alternatively like you do see some candles have two or three wicks in there that is all down to the size of the actual vessel this was late in the evening now I noticed some of the outside I thought for a second that some had leaked through but it actually hadn't what I had done was I'd poured some wax out now I never pour wax out I allow my candle to burn naturally all the way to the bottom but with these I genuinely hand on heart I didn't want to film this over the period of a week or two it would have taken a week or two for these candles to burn down naturally um, and I just didn't have the time I really wanted to see I wanted to put these vessels to the test maximum heat how would they respond to the maximum burn time maximum heat and I really was pushing the boundaries here just to test the vessels therefore the leaks on the outside were really where I poured some wax out of the vessel and yeah I was really happy about that because I did think for a second it was leaking through so this is this morning so I put these on to light this morning at 8 a.m and it is now noon one o'clock so yeah they've burned really well but I am definitely noticing a difference on the AC100 the, the sides seem like they are charcoal in some way um, a little bit burned would I say and yeah I did worry at this point I was down to the bottom of my wick as well which didn't happen yet on the AC 730 so I feel like this candle burned really fast so I blew it out immediately because I was just a little bit nervous about the sides and how black they were but the AC 730 appears to be pristine still at this point um, so I'm gonna just allow that to burn down um, because yeah, I was confident about the AC730. I didn't see any scorch marks. I saw some around the rim, if you can see there, around the rim, but I get that anyway with any candle that I buy. I do sometimes end up with those scorch marks around the rim, but the AC730 pot just seemed black inside. Like the whole thing seemed black. So I definitely wouldn't trust the AC100. And again, like I said, this was just my experiment. I hope you found it helpful thinking about what you're going to choose for your materials. For me personally, I feel like the AC730 was definitely the best one to choose. I would not 
go and make another candle in AC100. I I wouldn't trust it. It didn't it didn't um, crack. It didn't break. It didn't combust, which is great. But also remember that I've got these wicks quite a solid distance from the edges. They are over an inch away from the edges. So as for those small little candle vessels that you can buy, I wouldn't necessarily trust. Um, I think the heat might be too much for the AC100 if you're using those tiny little tea light ones um, to make an actual candle in. So I have got Jesmini AC100 tea light holders. They hold an actual tea light which has a metal casing already. They're fine. They've burned fine. There's been absolutely no damage to the AC100. Would I use those and fill them with wax? Probably not, but again, this is just my opinion and it's definitely up to you to do your own research. So I did want to keep this video relatively short and sweet just to give you the facts, find the find, show you my findings and let you make your own decisions and do your own research and see how you get on. If you've already made candles, do let me know. And for anyone else, thank you so much if you've stayed this long. I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.